Well, welcome, our Tapscott family. Uh, this is our very first uh, Tapscott service online, and I've got to tell you, uh, much like Pastor Justin said last Sunday, this feels really strange. Uh, I am speaking uh, to an empty room, uh, but what I have determined to do um, is to imagine you seated in front of me. I know where many of you are seated normally, and I can see your faces even now smiling as we begin our worship service uh, this evening. And we are here to worship the Lord our God. That's why we gather. And so each and every Sunday, whenever I'm up introducing the service, that's what I say. We are here to worship the Lord our God. And that's what we're here to do. Even though you are at home, in your living rooms, or wherever, we are one people, one body, and we're here to worship God. And so I want to lead us in to that even now as I pray and ask God to come and be among us. He is the one that has invited us to come and worship Him, and to do so in spirit and in truth. And so we want to do that in a way that is acceptable to God and pleasing to Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we're able to come together as your people, particularly as Morning Star Tapscott, and to worship you. Yes, we're doing this all together different because we're doing it online. And we're not doing it in a normal way where we're all gathered together in the room and we can see each other and we can touch one another. We realize what is among us and why we have to do what we're doing in this way. But Lord, none of this changes the fact that we are your people and you are our God. And you've called us to worship you and to do so in spirit and in truth. And that is what we want to do this evening, is to worship you who alone is worthy of our worship, who alone is worthy of our praise and our adoration. And so we thank you for the technology that makes this possible for us to gather as the body of Christ at Morningstar Taps, God online. And so, Lord, as we worship you, as we hear from your word, as we pray, as we sing, we are praying that all that is said and done will be to your honor and your glory. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome.
When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Of Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of Father, indeed you are able, and you will make a way, and you are our rock, and you are our salvation, 
and you are our refuge in triumphs of a trouble. Father, we come into your presence this morning, Lord, with this hope you have conquered and you have overcome. And through you, Lord, we will overcome. And with this hope, we come to you this morning to sing praises and worship to you, Lord. But how true are the words we just sang. You have overcome and you are able and you will make a way, Lord. Even at this time of uncertainty, even at this time of fear, Lord, even at this time of the unknown, we know and we trust in a God who is sovereign, who is powerful above everything, Lord. Lord, at this time, at this nation, at, as the whole world uh, is, is, is gripped in fear, Lord, we look at your word and we are comforted, Lord. Lord, we ask that you intervene and that you will stop the spread of this dangerous virus, Lord. Heavenly Father, there are many nations that are, that are affected. There are many nations, many, many thousands and millions of people who are, who are affected by this virus. Lord, we pray in your power you will touch them and that you will intervene and that you will stop the spread of this virus, Lord. We can take all the measures that we take, but yet you are in control. We know that you are sovereign and you are powerful, Father. Lord, because you are our hope, especially we lift up our nation, Canada, into your hands, Father. Lord, as we see every day, the numbers are still, still rising and still increasing. Lord, our hearts are filled with fear. Father, we pray that you will stop the spread, Father. Lord, we pray that you will touch this nation and heal us. We run to you, we humble ourselves and we ask for your touch and we ask for your healing on this nation. Father, we acknowledge that we have failed you and we have turned our backs on you. Father, forgive us, we pray. Lord, forgive this nation. Forgive us, Father. Heal us, we pray, Father. Heal us. We pray for the leaders and we pray for those who are in power, who are in decision-making uh, positions. Lord, we pray that you will give them the wisdom and the power Lord, and, and, and the knowledge, the discernment to take the right decisions, Father. We pray for the frontline workers who are working tirelessly, putting their lives on the line. God, protect them. Protect them under your power, Lord. Lord, we pray as the economy is crumbling around us, the world's economy, our nation's economy is crumbling. Lord, we know that the government is upon your shoulders and you will make a way and that you will lead us, Father. And we see in our words, in, in your word, in the Bible, that you led the people of Israel through the wilderness and you provided and you will provide for us as well because you are a providence. You are the Jehovah Jireh. But even as some of our members and and people around us, our neighbors, our friends uh, have lost their jobs or are or, or without a job or are laid off. Lord, these are uncertain times. We don't know what our future holds, but we know our future is in you, Lord. Our future is in you, Jesus, because you have conquered. But we especially pray for the church, Morning Star. Lord, these are new territory for us, Lord, new ways that we have never encountered or we never endeavored before. But we know that we can adapt. You have given us the knowledge and, the, and, the, and, the, and all the facilities for us to, to adapt to this situation. And as we go online with all of our ministries, Lord, we pray that it will be a blessing to our members and that they will be built up in faith, Father. Lord, we continue to pray that you will give the pastors, the leaders, and, and the elders, and who are in ministry, who are involved. Lord, we pray that your protection will be upon us, Father. 
you continue to bless this ministry and that you will lead us because you are our shepherd and we ask that you will lead us to the pastures the green pastures and the still waters father we commit ourselves this morning as pastor dennis uh, our pastor dennis comes and preaches your word lord may your words of hope comfort us and nourish our faith we humble ourselves in jesus precious name we pray amen Your promise, her 
Thank you so much, uh, Leanne and, and Grace and Yumi, for uh, leading us in worship. As I was singing those songs, my heart was uh, encouraged uh, that our God is more than able and that He indeed is our hope, our sure and certain trust uh, at any time, but especially in these uncertain days. Again, we want to welcome you, uh, friends, uh, to our very first uh, Morningstar Tapscott uh, service online. Uh, we are coming to you live, and uh, we trust that just so far it's been an encouragement to you as you have joined with us in those songs of praise and of hope, of encouragement to our God. And now as we look to His Word, he wants to continue to encourage us to hear from Him. And I want to read for you uh, the passage of Scripture on which my message is based. And uh, it's entitled, Finding Hope in the Midst of Difficult Times. And these are difficult times for us. And we have a God who is, who is our only sure and certain hope. And, and Paul says this in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. If you've got your Bibles, you might even want to be turning there now. Romans 12, verse 12, Paul says, he says, be joyful in hope. Be joyful in hope. It's a strange way to say something, but that is the Bible way of saying that in the midst of whatever it is that we are facing, because of the hope that we have in Christ, we can be joyful. And he says, be patient in affliction. God expects of us to have our trust fully in Him, so we can be patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. We need to be praying for each other. We need to be praying for our world, as our Brother Raglan uh, did just a little while ago. And that is what the Scriptures exhort us to do. But also, I want to read for you what Paul says a few uh, chapters later in chapter 15 of, of Romans. And I want to read for you one more verse, verse 4 where Paul says, for everything, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us 
so that through endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. There is that word again, hope. We might have hope. We need those words in these days. Al Mohler, who is the president of Southern Seminary, uh, wrote uh, a couple weeks ago these words. He says, an unforeseen global crisis forces the entire world to learn a new vocabulary, a new set of habits, a new set of rules, and a new set of expectations. All of this by a tiny, invisible corona virus known as COVID-19. You know, it's really funny. Because it, well, if it, it, it would be funny if it wasn't so serious that we have this invisible organism. We can't see, but it's got us all in its grip. Indeed, he says, this virus has reshaped the social, the moral, the political, and the economic landscape, not just of one or two nations, but the entire planet. We're all gripped by what is happening. And he says our vocabulary now includes social distancing and flattening the curve. And then he says this. He says, more will come. He's right. More will come. That we can be sure of. You know, as I was thinking about what has been going on, I realized that nothing, certainly in my lifetime, and I suspect yours as well, nothing has had a more pervasive and disruptive effect on our lives than the current crisis that we find ourselves in. We are witnessing, friends, the humbling of a civilization that believed itself to be in control of our world. We like to think that we are the ones in control, that we are the masters, as it were, of our own faith and destiny. I think we're beginning to realize we're not. We certainly have been reminded of it. We are witnessing the humbling of a civilization that believes itself to be in control. Our healthcare systems are buckling under the strain of the impact of this crisis. And the global economy is spinning out of control. Uh, and people are wondering where to turn to for answers. You might be one of those. Where and how do we find hope in these difficult days? You know, the latest Health Canada update or good economic advisor is not a bad place to start. In fact, we have been told, and I would want to encourage us to continue to get those updates that come to us to help us to know how best we can stop the spread of this virus. Or maybe you're wondering about your stocks and you might want to talk to your financial advisor about what you do as the stock market continues to go down rather than up. Those are not bad places to start. If you're wondering about your health, Oh, you're looking for economic answers. But friends, that's not going to be enough to get us through this. And you know it. You know that to be true. You see, the current crisis has unearthed a deeper need that we as human beings have. What is that? And that, Well, friends, I believe that is to know what is the substance and source of our hope. Where do we go to feel secure in an unsecure world? Where do we go when our world is coming apart? And it certainly is for so many. Where do we go? That is indeed a good question. Well, I believe there's only one answer. And that is God and His Word. Now, for many of us, that's not going to come as a surprise. But for many people, that is indeed a surprise. You know, as I've been listening to the news... In these past weeks, that this virus has continued to capture our lives as this crisis has grown, what has struck me most is how little God is mentioned as where we should go and turn. Everything else we should be doing except God. And I am disappointed. In fact, it burdens my heart. But that's where we are as a nation. 
That's where our world is. But friends, there's only one answer. And that is God in our word. And His word. You see, I'm reminding those of us who know that to be true. That our world desperately need to hear that from us even now. You see, one of the inevitable outcomes of a crisis like this is that God will use it to expose hidden sins with the goal of bringing us to repentance and cleansing. God doesn't waste anything. I believe God wants to relocate the source of our joy in His grace rather than in our good health. He wants to relocate the source of our joy in His mercy rather than in our money. In His worth rather than in our wealth. To look to Him for hope and security and not our global economic or political or social status. God can teach us so many lessons in these days. You know, a man approached a Little League baseball game one afternoon. And he asked a boy what the score was. And the little boy responded, it's 18 to nothing. (laughs) We are behind. And then the man said, you know, know, I I bet you you are discouraged, aren't you? That little boy with a look of confidence in his eyes looked at that man and he said, why should I be discouraged? And we haven't even gotten up to bat yet. (laughs) You know, we laugh at those words. But, you know, there is something hopeful, though some of us might say wishful, in that little boy's answer. Perspective. You see, it's all about where and to whom you are looking when all seems to be going in the other direction. And so the Apostle Paul in Romans 15, 4, let me remind you again, I read it earlier, writes this. He says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. And again, in verse 13, Paul says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In those two passages, we have both the substance and the source of hope. The substance and the source of hope. Paul says the Word of God is the substance of our hope. The Word of God is the substance of our hope. And he says God himself is its source. The Word of God and God Himself, friends, that's what we need in these days. We need hope. You see, hope is essential to our survival as human beings. You see, when life throws us a curve like the current crisis, nothing helps like hope. We see, without hope, prisoners of war will languish and die. Without hope, students will get discouraged and drop out of school. Without hope, addicts return to their habits. And without hope, nations will flounder and lose their way. Without hope, even preachers and strong Christians struggle to press on. Hope is not merely a nice option that we kind of tack on that helps us temporarily to clear the hurdle that we find ourselves in. No, it is essential to our very survival. It is something that is important to us as water is to fish, as vital as electricity is to a light bulb. Hope is that basic to life, and you and I need it every day and especially in these days. And that is why it is important that we are looking to the right one and the right place to find hope. And the Scriptures exhort us to hope in God and to do so to the very end. At times, I admit, it will be a battle to maintain our hope. But friends, that's a battle that can only be fought and won with the Word of God. 
And this is especially needed, not just in times of suffering, but also at times of great pleasure. Oh yes, this crisis that we're in will end. And you know what we will do? We will go back to our normal lives. And some of us, in fact, far too many of us will forget God. We will go back to our prosperity. And we will again be tempted to hope in this world. Why? Well, because you see, our prosperity will increase. But friends, we are in times of great suffering. And sometimes when we are in times of great suffering, we are also tempted to think that God's sovereignty is not believable. Where is God in this time of suffering? Where is He? And therefore, the ground of our hope is gone. That is why you and I need to read our Bibles. Why? Because the Word of God has great hope persevering power at times like these. You see, the only way we can win the battle of discouragement and maintain the full assurance of hope firm to the end is by fighting hopelessness with the Word of God. We can fight the battle against discouragement and hopelessness with the truth of God's Word. Let me give you one of those truths even now. Jesus is our friend. He is our master. He is our God. He is our all. All that is for us. And that is the way we go forward in difficult days. Not alone or in our strength, friends, but in the strength of Christ, the living word. And so when we are trapped in a tunnel of misery, The hope that is found in the scriptures points us to the light that is at the end. Hear what the psalmist says in Psalm 42. Why are you done cast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And when we are discouraged, the hope that is found in the scriptures will lift our spirits. And so God says, to Joshua in Joshua 1 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You see, when you and I attempted to quit, the hope that is found in the scriptures will keep us going. Again, Isaiah in Isaiah 40 tells us, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary or tired and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow weary and tired and a young man will stall, will stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and will not faint. And so when we lose our way, And confusion blurs the destination. Hope that is found in the scriptures will dull the edge of panic. Again, David in Psalm 119 says this, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When we struggle with a crippling disease or a lingering illness, hope that is found in the scriptures helps us persevere beyond the pain. And Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 says this, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. And when we fear the worst Hope that is found in the scriptures brings reminders that God is still in control. He is on his throne. And so the last book of the Bible, in the very first chapter of Revelation, hear these words. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, 
the Lord Jesus says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I'm alive forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and Hades. Do not fear. And so when we find ourselves unemployed, Hope that is found in the scriptures tells us we still have a future. And Jesus, Jesus in Matthew 6 says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Yes, you are. And so when we are forced, forced to sit back and wait, and we're doing a lot of waiting these days, Hope that is found in the scriptures gives us patience to trust. And so the writer of Hebrews says this, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. You see, when we feel rejected and abandoned, hope that is found in the scriptures reminds us we are not alone. We will make it through this. Again, the writer to the Hebrews says, God has said, never, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. You know, there are some people who have lost loved ones as a result of this virus. People that they did not expect to die. And so when we find ourselves saying our final farewell to somebody that we love, hope that is found in the Scriptures, in the life beyond, gets us through the grief. Again, John says this in the Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things have passed away. What a future God promises us. Death will not, cannot have a hold on us because God has the last word. And so if you find yourself having lost a loved one, hope can be found in God's word. And so we desperately need the substance of hope that is found in the scriptures. We need it for these perilous days. Again, Paul writes, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. You know, in that passage, there are three truths that we need to meditate on so we can know and experience the hope God has for us. And the first lesson in this verse is that the Scriptures are given to us to instruct us. Literally, to teach us. You see, a lot of us are guilty of bypassing or short-circuiting this step. What do I mean? Well, we are hungry, absolutely. We are all hungry to be encouraged by the Scriptures. But we're often impatient with the need to be instructed by them. You see, a lot of us would often rather have the fruit without laboring in the field. But you know, the best way to grow in hope is to cultivate it. And so like the farmer who gets up and gets into his field and is there through the day working it so that at the end... He will have a harvest of an abundance and enjoy it. So too we must get up, we must get in the Word. So we will reap a harvest. We will cultivate hope. 
If you want to experience the hope that comes from God, friends, you have to study and meditate on His Word. You need to, I need to have a systematic diet of biblical instruction every day, not just a few, a few crumbs every now and then. We need it if we're going to fight successfully to maintain the full assurance of our hope to the end. Everything, Paul says, everything, all of Scripture that was written in the past was written for our instruction. It's there to teach us. Do not neglect it. That's the first point of Romans 15, 4. But the second point in the verse stresses that the instruction is not finally for the head, but for the heart. You see, you can read Scripture all you want in a kind of intellectual way and never have it touch you in all the ways that God wants. No, God wants it to move from your head to your heart. All the Scriptures are intended by God to give endurance and encouragement. And so when the instructions of the Scriptures are properly understood, they produce endurance and encouragement. God wants us to meditate on His Word. Endurance is what you have to have to keep on going in a path of obedience when you feel miserable and when you meet all kinds of opposition as we do daily. And so where does endurance come from? Well, it comes from the Scriptures. As you meditate on the Word. And so Paul, in 2 Corinthians 4, reminds us we do not lose heart. Why? Paul says for this slight momentary affliction. And what we are facing, friends, it is momentary. It will not last forever. It is momentary. And Paul says it is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. If we see it from God's perspective, this, this crisis will lead us to glorify God. And in the end, we will be glorified with Him. It is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Endurance is a promised gift from God. It is one of the great shouts of God's sovereignty, of His sovereign grace in our lives. And that is why Paul can say to you and I in, Ephesians, in Philippians 1.6, I am sure that he who has begun a good work in you shall bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. God will do it. That is how you keep going when everything around you looks bleak, when the normal human encouragements evaporate, when there is nothing left. You go to the Word and it will sustain you. It will fill you with hope. You can endure through the Scriptures. Again and again, the Scriptures will give you God's perspective on things. Always. And that biblical perspective will make a hard situation endurable. The Scriptures are given to us, to you and me, for our encouragement and our endurance in hard times. And finally... Paul says, in Romans 15, 4, all Scripture has this goal in mind, to sustain our hope, to sustain our hope. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. Hope. You know, there are stories of endurance in the Scriptures. From beginning to end, there is Noah who built the ark. And he was a long time building that ark. And there were people who were laughing at him. He must have looked silly to them. But Noah endured. Why? Because he looked to God. God had spoken his word to Noah. And he endured to the end. But there's also Abraham whom God came to and said, Abraham, I want you to leave your family. I want you to go to a place that you know not of. And Abraham went and he endured. The writer of Hebrews says he didn't even see what God had promised. 
but he endured. And then there is Joseph, who was sold into slavery by his brothers. And he must have wondered what God was doing, because God had spoken to Joseph often in dreams. But he endured in order that God might use him to save his family. Then there is Moses, a man who was on the run, but God would use him, send him back to Egypt to bring his people out and lead them through the wilderness and he endured despite all of the difficulties and the struggles along the way. And then there is David, the great shepherd king of Israel, who ran from Saul for many, many year, years, but he endured. And finally, ascended the throne. There is Job, who endured despite all that came on him through the hands of the enemy. Job endured. He would not give up on God. And God rewarded his faith. There is the story of our Lord Jesus. A man acquainted with griefs and sorrows but endure it to the end. And they're all meant to be examples to us to make a difference in our lives by nourishing our hope. Oh yes, friends, that's why they're in the Bible. But I want to say to you, these stories, as wonderful and necessary as they are, they're not enough. They're not enough. You see, the writer to the Hebrews makes that clear to us. Because you see, Hebrews says, right? Hebrews says in Hebrews, he says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and all the names that I just mentioned, they're all witnesses to us of endurance by hope. He says, we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. And so we're encouraged to run. Yes, we are encouraged to run with perseverance. But then he says, as you run with hope, You ought to fix your eyes where? Not on the witnesses, friends. No, but on Jesus. Because Jesus alone is the author and the finisher of our faith. He alone is the author and the finisher of our hope. You see, we need more than an example. We need a Savior. And Jesus is that. We are driven and sustained by a real hope. A hope that is centered in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus' death in our place, his resurrection, his sovereign reign over all the world, all points to the unshakable basis of our hope. And so when all is gone, there is our Lord Jesus, who is our hope. And so the strength to endure when everything else is coming apart. The strength to endure comes from the hope before us. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so fix your eyes on Him in these days. We dare not look elsewhere. For our very hope depends on looking on Jesus and on Him alone. You see, the things we pursue in our world, our homes, our jobs, family, success, Oh yes, those are all good things. But they will never fully satisfy us. They will always fail to fulfill us. They will never measure up. It only takes a virus to wipe them out. And that is what we're seeing in these days. Yet that's where we often put our hope. We're tempted to put our hope in uncertain things, in fragile things. And that is why Jesus says, do not store up treasures on earth, but in heaven, where viruses cannot get to it. Thieves cannot break in and steal. Do not make anything on this earth your ultimate hope. It's too fragile. It's too fleeting as this virus has shown us. Oh yes, affliction is normal in this fallen world. The scriptures tell us that. The apostle Peter tells us. Paul tells us that in Romans 8. But Christ has come. And he has carried our sin. And our sorrows to the cross. And into the grave. And he has left them there. And he rose. So that now we have an unshakable hope. In 
not instead of, but we have this unshakable hope in the midst of suffering. And a lot of us are suffering even now. But we have an unshakable hope. And this hope gives rise to joy even as we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. And that is why Paul says in Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope. Because if you have Jesus, you have everything you need. Friends, our ultimate hope and refuge is only in the true and living God. Jesus Christ. We must remind ourselves of that now and we must share that truth with our neighbors and point them to Christ alone as our only hope. Even if, even if we have to do that at a distance. Beloved, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through Endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures. We might have hope. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word. Oh, what an encouragement to us in these days. We know where to turn. We turn to your word. We turn to you. For you alone are able to sustain us through your word. And so we thank you for the promises that are there. There are promises that are meant to undergird and sustain us, Lord, in these difficult times when when our, our hearts are prone to become anxious, when we are we are prone to worry about tomorrow. And so we're reminded again in your word that our Lord Jesus Christ is the God who says. I am the one who holds all things together. Look to me. I am the one who says to those who are weary and burdened, come to me and I will give you rest for your soul. We are exhorted to put our hope and our trust in Him and in Him alone. And so we thank you, Lord God, for your word that reminds us that we have a sure and certain hope, even Jesus Christ, who has gone through the curtain for us and made a way into your very presence. Thank you. Thank you, O God, the God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we can come to you even now and you will encourage us. You will reassure us. You will fill us with joy. And that we will go and we will tell others of this hope that is ours, that can be theirs, even today. Our Lord Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus, thank you. In your precious name we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much for tuning in to our very first uh, service online. I trust that you have been blessed, but more than that, you have been encouraged. Your hope has been renewed because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. All that we need do is look to Him, look to His Word to sustain us. And so I want to encourage you, friends. Uh, to invite your friends to tune in. And so for as long as we need to, we're going to be doing this every Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. And so you're going to hear from us. You're going to hear from me a word. You're going to hear our brother Raglan. We want to encourage you. We want to nourish the people of God with the word of God. But more than that, our plan is that twice a week to also give you a kind of a mini word of encouragement. So on Monday, you'll hear from me this coming Monday. You can tune in on our Facebook page or on the Tapscott uh, website. There is, a, there is a, pardon me, the Morningstar website. There's a Tapscott page that you can find. And we're going to have a little word of encouragement for you. On Monday, I will bring that word. And on Thursday, Raglan will bring that word of encouragement for you. We want to help you through the week. And we will do that again each week for as long as we need to. We want to encourage the Capscott family. We're also encouraging you to take advantage of being part of our connection group. It's meeting online as well. And our Brother John is leading us. And uh, we've encouraged and invited uh, several people who joined us last evening, and we're going to do that again uh, this coming Thursday, and so you want to take advantage of that. Call John or speak to Raglan or Manny, 
they'll be able to help you to tell you how to, to get connected to that. Friends, I know from speaking to several of you that you have been calling each other. That is such a wonderful thing. I want to encourage you to continue to do that. We may be housebound, most of us, but you know what? God has given us technology in order to still connect, and so I want to encourage you to continue to do that. There are several folks who really the only means of connection they now have is a phone call. And so how encouraging it is that when they hear from a brother or sister from the Tapscott family asking them how they're doing. So I want to encourage you to keep doing that. You will hear from us as pastors. We will call you from time to time to encourage you to see how you're doing. And if we can help you in any way, please let us know. That's why we're here. A visitation team, obviously they can't come and visit you in their home, in your homes, but they can visit you on the phone. And so they're going to be calling you as well. You might say to us, stop calling me. Well, it's because we love you. And we're going to keep caring for you in all the ways that God allows us to do that. These are those kind of times when we need to be an encouragement to one another. But again, I want to encourage you to make sure that you are spending time in the Word. You know, I was speaking to someone, one of our Tapscott members, this past week, and and I said to this person, I said, you know, you're indoors. You, You don't really have many places to go. So guess what? You've got way more time on your hands. So how are you using that time? Well, I would encourage you to use it by getting into God's Word in a way where you probably would not have had the kind of time you now have to do so. Again, I believe God wants to use this this moment in our history, this crisis, to bring us closer to Him and to bring others. And so I want to encourage you to get into the Word. Use your time wisely. Do not squander the time that God has given to you. Use it to nourish yourself with God's Word, to get close to Him. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. Let me read for you what Paul writes to the Ephesians. We've just kind of sung it. And Paul says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, 9 and 11, you can, you can tune into the live stream at the Shepherd Campus. So we want to feed you Saturday night, and we want to have you be fed again Sunday morning. You are a rich people. You are a rich people. God bless you as you continue to serve Him. We'll see you again next Saturday.